Okay. Hi. Um, welcome to the Moonstone Matriarchy, a girl power campaign with some sexy, strong women, both inside and outside of the campaign. Um, I'm Jessica, also known as I Sneeze Stars online in places like TikTok and Instagram, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign this evening. Um, let's go through the shows that we have on the channel. So Monday nights, we have the Iowan Adventures at 7.30 p.m. EST, um, DM'd by myself. Uh, and uh, including our wonderful tech man, um, Daniel, who is behind the screens right now. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign uh, at 7.30 p.m. EST with myself and Katie and also our tech guy, Daniel. Um, this last Thursday um, is the last episode of um, The Lost Continent at 8 p.m. EST, uh, DM'd by Mr. Markham. The game has come to its conclusion and that's super exciting uh i think they've been here a full year now so that's that's pretty baller um friday nights we have the legends of kralis at 10 30 p.m est a ttrpg created and gm'd by Telerius game master and three saturdays a month we have uh the moonstone matriarchy um star would you do the thing I will do the thing. Hi, I'm Star. I will be your Cappy Herringon Wild, Wild Magic Sorcerer tonight. And you can find me on Star Mama C on TikTok, everywhere else, characters without stories, because that is the name of my podcast where I interview people about characters they haven't had a chance to play yet. I am going to pass it over to Juniper. Me? Gosh, I wasn't ready for that. Hello, I'm Juniper. I'm at Linen and Spice, most places on the internet. Um, I talk a lot about TTRPGs, queer stuff, um, disability, autism, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, aside from playing every Saturday on the Moonstone Matriarchy, you can find me over on the Shattered Tabletop Games channel on the first and third Sunday of every month where we play um, Alien, which is a lot of fun and a lot of awesome horror, and also Naturally Shattered, which is um, a completely different system altogether. So yeah, tonight I'm playing Clover, who is our little tabaxi house cat cleric, um, and I'm going to pass to Anemone. GM of Revan. Hello, everybody. My name is GM of Revan. You can call me Ed. I get to play with these gorgeous, lovely ladies today. They are femurely wonderful and gorgeous and powerful. And I like hanging out with them on Saturdays because they make me feel good and we tell really great stories together. I also am a GM, so I game master every Tuesday. You can watch Strands of Fate and and we're going to be closing it down in a couple of sessions, but God Wars on Friday nights. Having said that, 
I'm gonna pass the buck to the mother of dragon stickers, Scarlet. <laughs> I love that. Mother of dragon stickers. That's Hello. my new title. Hi, I am the mother of dragon stickers. Some of my babies are right here, actually. I keep them close by so I could tell people about them. Hi, I am a D&D player, GM, and illustrator, uh, which is where the stickers come in. You can get my illustrations on my Etsy, my website. But that's not what I want to tell you about. I want to tell you about how I am also running a couple of campaigns on my channel, on Fridays, I run Once Upon a Woodland, which is a cute woodland critter slash nightmare fuel D 5th edition D&D all-girl game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And then on Sundays, aka tomorrow, we do Out of the Abyss, which is an official module. Uh, it's been going for two years strong. It's got a really strong community, a very lively audience, and it's a lot of fun if you ever want to just like jump in and see some of the best role play you've ever seen. Uh Take it away, Katie. Hi, I'm Katie. I am Dungeon Mistress Katie on all the internet spaces. Um, like Jess said, you can find me here on Tuesdays as well. Um, but then on every other Wednesday, I play uh, the Yellow Power Ranger on Centurion Ridge um, Power Rangers on... Um, I almost said Master of Rum. It's not. And that's not even the channel. Um, Shadows of Nox, that's the one. And uh, that's like, that's not this Wednesday, but then the following Wednesday, every two weeks. Um, and then on Sundays, I play Call of Cthulhu on the same channel. And, but tonight I am playing Rosalind Alara. I clearly did not just wake up a half an hour ago. It's fine. Um, but I play, play, play Rosalind on this channel. She is the group's um, Eladrin Rogue and... She is just right now. I think they're standing in her boyfriend's bedroom, or do we walk out? I don't know. We're 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 doing great. But that being said, I'm gonna send it back to Scarlet for our recap. I thought you were gonna say I am our party horn dog, not our party uh, <laughs> our party rogue. <laughs> I mean, you're not, you wouldn't be incorrect. Um, <laughs> All right. I think I was the first person to have sex in the group. No. Nope. Like in no. no? Delphra oh, was. Delphra beat you. Delphra. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, you were the first person to have sex with a man. That's fair. Mm -hmm. That is fair. A very yeah. attractive. That's man. that's a different kind of sex, I think. Yeah. All anyway, right. Guys, are you guys ready for the recap? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> what a way to start. <laughs> Last time Fine. on the Moonstone Matriarchy, the sisters having narrowly avoided some dinner drama, breakfast drama, some over-the-table drama, decided to finally go on their mission to the catacombs where they were looking for the planetary of destiny, where hopefully they could find some clues as to the upcoming eclipse and possibly the end of the world. They made their way into the catacombs, but not before Sin and Brother Oswald almost had a moment unless they were just imagining things. Who knows? As they made their way into the catacombs, they were accosted by mischievous, malevolent, maybe, spirits who teased them and pushed them and prodded them and created nasty illusions, getting them lost in the labyrinth that was the catacombs. But the sisters pulled themselves together using their wits and skills, managed to escape, if not barely, because some of those roles be be bad they finally made it to the great sexy door <laughs> where <laughs> where they solved a puzzle a strange puzzle utilizing various languages and colors and color theory and mixology and things that are very important to your layman here in the castle while also being attacked by more spirits. There's a lot of angry spirits down here. It is a catacombs after all. Once they reached the planetarium of destiny. Destiny, destiny, <laughs> destiny. Pew, 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 pew. They, <laughs> <laughs> they found a prophecy. A prophecy that referenced six sisters and six stones 
in very precarious poem, rhymy language. Their mission has been laid out for them. Find each of the stones using the clues in the poem and save the world. Pew, 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 pew. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what happened last time. Did you plan this to co to actually? No, that was all improv. Actually, I didn't have. To I forgot that I had to do it until like two minutes before we sat down. It was really good. Sorry, that was an amazing recap. Yeah. When, I, when I said you, I meant Jessica. Um, what? Th th that's oh. fair that you. So it's fair that you thought it was you because you just talked. So absolutely <laughs> on me. <laughs> what did you think I was planning, Jessica? Did you did you plan to have our um, have an eclipse in our game coexist with the real? Absolutely not. Real no. Life? I didn't even know an eclipse was brilliant. happening. Yeah, like... April eighth. April eighth, oh. we're gonna have a full, we're like a full fucking eclipse in North America. So. Hey, actually, fun... I totally did. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact: the fact that we have total eclipses on Earth is a total coincidence because mm -hmm. it just so happens that we are the sun is like four hundred times bigger than earth and the moon is exactly 400 it's a coincidence the fact that our moon exactly blocks out the sun and makes that ring is not like a math thing it's it just we are lucky we're lucky that we get nice. that phenomenon and i just think that's neat that is that's would, other, would other planets in goldilocks zones have that then no because if our moon was just a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller or a little bit different spaced then it wouldn't cover the sun it just so happens that the size of our moon Aww. happens to line up with how far away we are from the sun it is a complete coincidence and it is Nature's not a amazing. standard yeah I love nature mm -hmm. it's so fucking cool yeah mm -hmm. i'm i'm so distracted by the fact that i'm blurry on our stream but not in the zoom and i don't oh, know really? why what? bit is your That's... bit rate kind of funky Bizarre. oh maybe that's usually an upload. Uh, you like don't look upload blurry thing. when I look at Twitch. Okay. Yeah, same. Well, I've been you look fine to messing me. with everything because to me it does. Okay. It's cool. What else? Um, I look blurry on Twitch. No, that's just because I have it set to a low. I have it like set to 480p. Oh, okay. I have never even looked at my settings, so I don't actually fucking know. That might be. A I am going to give you a quick, like, by the time that you leave the castle, you guys would have like a month, a month ago, the moonstone was stolen. Like yeah. a week ago, you were sent to retrieve the moonstone. A week before that, or a week after that, you were back in Tembrosa. By the time you leave the spire, you will have been a officially a party like for three weeks in game. But we've okay. known each other for like a year. I mean, you guys have known each other. <laughs> no, I mean the players. Right? The players. Yeah, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the like prince the did take you dilution. out of his room. Uh, you guys left. He's he told you to go to the library to see Galen if you needed help. Um and doesn't plan to accompany you. He's just he needs Thank a long you time. for going through my stuff, uh, uh, bringing up bad memories, oh, and I, I will see you at dinner. Um, what do you do? Get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's walked room. you to his room, the door of his room. So I think Sin what is like lead marching, like assuming everyone's just going to follow her because she wants to go to the library, and she's like out loud listing all the things she thinks we need to be doing. She's like... All right, let's gather all the information we can about the different moons or the different stones. See if there's any written record of this existence. Uh, if this is common knowledge, let's uh, take a look and maybe cross-reference some of the locations. See if we can't get like a map and a guide. Oh, sisters. Sorry. Clover is trotting at your heels. Yeah. yeah, following. <laughs> yes. Little cat looks up at you. <laughs> Apologies. Do you, any of you have any insight? Delphor goes flying by you. Okay. Um. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few I, questions I for think... Galen as well, but that, that sounds good to me. Yes, I think maybe we should tackle this one at a time, though if we could at least pinpoint where we think each one could be, we could we could make a, like a 
travel plan that is the most efficient so we don't have to mm. back and forth we have limited time till do we know how long it is until the eclipse you have about two months we have two months all okay. right and we travel on foot and <sighs> we're not the well, fastest I mean, party <laughs> maybe we need to uh find another way to travel oh, Cap happy i don't suppose you're uh Dragon, dragon friend would be able to help us yeah <laughs> good luck Whoa, he, can be a big, <laughs> he can be a big dragon um well I, yeah that, that's I, okay if not it was just a thought no i i think well i'll ask <laughs> isn't isn't there a part of the poem that could potentially be referencing your possibly intended that's right yeah it's that's something about vows that might then be the in the coldest one. then in the coldest winter realm a sapphire gift to crown your helm the god of weather left behind a gift to give when vows are signed i think that was the bit you have a is a sapphire diadem mm-hmm here for I, it. Sounds so I, pretty. I mean, I don't. Do I have to get married to get no, the stone? We could absolutely steal it from him. Can you always just say that you're going to get married? Like, I vow to marry you. We steal this. No, I'm sorry. That's rude. That's terribly rude. Don't, I'm sorry. Definitely don't vow that. Fay and vows. That's are... fair. That's fair. I'm not used to yeah. Fay. Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. Galen about. Um, well, maybe we shouldn't have these conversations knowing that Fleety can be invisible. It could be around us at any time. I was just kidding when Stolstis listened. It was a joke. <laughs> uh, but, which actually I'm not so... I don't really like that anymore. I, well, Cappy, that he spies on us all the time? Well, I mean, it's kind of nice to have him near when I need him, but also at the same time, I never know when he's near. Maybe if you ask him to not be invisible around you, he will do so. Because he seems to do what you ask him to do. That's definitely something. I agree with that. Or like a code yeah. word or a sound that only you can mm -hmm. hear. Yeah. yeah, like announce his presence somehow so that you know he's there. Like he could he could make the room a little bit colder or something like that. So, you know, I don't know. The thing about, hold on one second. Um. The thing about making the room colder, you know, you know how we're in a place filled with shadows right now. It's already pretty cold to me. Mm. That's that's fair. No offense to anyone listening. Oh. It could make it, it make smell snowflakes. like Eustace. <gasps> that's a lovely yes. thought. Yeah. Are we certain that Fleety would honor such a suggestion? He can say it, but we would never actually know if he holds to it. There's literally no way can, to verify. But Faye are, are generally... They can't lie, right? Right. Mm. That is a common misconception. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> could, not could true? We, could we just ask him? Hey, Fleety, if you're there, it's an M&A, <laughs> Annie. Uh, you gave me an apple. I know this isn't exactly the best spot for it, but if you are in the vicinity, do you mind just doing a little bit of, like, sparkle snow showers? <laughs> just a little bit. Just a, just a tiny Sparkle dab <laughs> over all over Cappy, you know, not to give wow. her just like Phew. just, you know, powder puff her or something. I don't know. Uh, hmm. uh, <laughs> roll me persuasion. <laughs> roll for Henny, innuendo. Henny, I think Henny, we all just blanked out. <laughs> Henny, Henny, why do you do this to me? <laughs> Annie, you're not really this impulsive. Come on, girl. You you have a 12 in intelligence. A 12. She's smarter than me. <laughs> That's a natural two. A two? Yeah. Uh, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Well, definitely he's not going to listen to me because I'm not cappy. That's one thing. Right. I mean, it, you know, I, I'm definitely got the in. I'll talk to him. But I think right now we should probably just talk to Galen. And at that, because I'm assuming you're walking and talking. Yeah. Um, you get to the fifth floor where the library is. Um, Galen is inside. Um, when you walk in, she is actually curled up 
in a chair reading a book. Uh, completely oblivious to the fact that anyone has just walked in here. Before we, as we're entering in, Annie is going to be slightly disruptive and, and nudge over. Well, fast pace over towards where Roz Potatoes. Is. Potatoes. Potatoes. Um, Potatoes. Fast, fast walk to where Roz <laughs> is and then just kind of whisper, can we have that discussion? Because you were telling me that we would have that discussion about certain situations. And everybody okay. gave me a weird look just now when I said powder puff over Cappy. And I'm not sure if I made a euphemism or something. <laughs> We can absolutely have that conversation okay. if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Yes. hundred okay. percent. Yeah. Maybe not now, but okay. Like, Whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Exactly. Fine. Um, but right. like, you know, just, just a little quick thing. Um, at the end of, um, fun time, um, if it, there tends to be white stuff that happens. So, um, that's, that's why. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> And is like, like okay, <laughs> it's understood. The most awkward I've <laughs> ever <laughs> been in a DD game. I'm so sorry, guys. No, like, no, I'm just okay. playing What's off funny the fact is... that Anemone <laughs> is actually curious about this on the table. She hey. is actually 1000% curious about this whole situation because everybody seems to be having a good time. And she's like, well, that looks like fun, but I don't know if it's the right fun for me. She's exploring. Okay. No, we can have a real conversation um, at any time. But yeah, just just keeping in mind that um, say, saying that he want um, there to be to white white stuff all over um, Fleety's girlfriend uh, at the end. Yeah, it might not be the greatest thing for you to ask for. Um, he might just, take that a little too literally. Yeah, a little literally. I don't know if he's like on the spectrum at all, but like he might take it real literally. Like I do type sometimes. You know, it just depends. My is autism apologies. a thing in this I'm world? So sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, potatoes. <laughs> what do you do? Hello, Galen. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> you, see her, you see her like kind of jerk look up and go, oh, hi. Uh, We're back. Wow. Hi, everyone. Exactly. Twenty nine minutes what in, is she we already have an awkward. Yeah, shit what is down. she reading? <laughs> um, a court of Thorn and she, Roses. That is exactly what she is reading. She is reading yes. one of. Um, I think it was it was Meriwether. Is that what we said her name was? Mary and Mary Meriwether. Can't remember yeah, my own. Like so that. something like that. Mm. So face mutt, basically. Face mutt, or or mm -hmm. you know, yeah, nice. it, it's a it's a collection. So, <laughs> um, and she usually, without even a thought, just throw it behind a chair. <laughs> um, hi, how are you? Uh, oh. we're good. We need to use the library, and perhaps your expertise. Uh, okay, sure. What what can I do for you? What where do you need? Where do you what what are you? Looking I'm for? going to share with her like the poem and explain what we witnessed and that we need to kind of identify as many clues as possible from the okay. poem. Okay. She reads it over. It takes her a second. I'm gonna roll to see how well she does with this. Sure, that's really good. Um, she goes. So you're looking for Godstones? Is that what that, they're called? That's well. They've been mentioned of certain stones and such. Uh, I don't know much about them, but I'm sure we can find something about them here. Uh, and she starts going through these massive, um, uh, the stacks of library books. Um. And what I'm going to do for this is uh, she'll help you research. And um, what we're going to do is have everyone roll investigation. Because I'm assuming you guys are all kind of just going out and looking through these books. Uh, I see a very excited face there. I'll give someone guidance. Can Or can I go around and help everybody? You um, can go I can around see... and help everyone. Um, okay, so I give everyone guidance. That is a modified 20. So you have 20. Okay, cool. 
Uh, everyone, tell me what you get. I'm rolling oh, the guidance. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. I really think that I should have. 21. 21? Some points. 13. 13. Into investigation. I'm opening up my character sheet. Sorry. Was that including guidance, um, Kepi? I know. I got a four on guidance. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's good. Sorry. I thought you meant a four on the D20. <laughs> no, no, no. I got a nine on the D20. But. Or no, Ooh. I got an eight on the D20. Ooh. I got. That was a good okay. noise. Yeah, hold on. Let me. I can see all her rolls. <laughs> you can see them. Okay, yeah. where is the chat? Okay, there it is. I got a twenty-four, including the guidance. Twenty-four, Ooh. including the guidance. Okay, you guys did really well. So here's here's what's going on. As you guys are going around, um, you're all finding bits and pieces of like she's like look for this for mossy bark look for this for the godstones and like she sent you off in different directions delfer comes back with um a dusty tome that uh it's called the myths of tenbrosa and it's it details uh the godstones creation and purpose uh crafted by and it says it's crafted by um archaic fey creatures to like balance the world's magic each stone kind of uh, embodies an elemental power. Um, take that as you will. Uh, who got the next, the next highest one? Thirteen was Cappy. Uh, yeah. Cappy, you find a history of mossy bark, um, which is hidden among the shelves of the library is a leather-bound volume called the chronicles of the enchanted forest um it offers and it's sort of like an enlightening glimpse into the town's origins it reveals how uh mossy bark was founded <laughs> centuries ago by refugees of veridonia uh seeking sanctuary from a war of dark magics that kind of ravaged their country at the time uh, the book hints at some sort of an ancient pact made with the land itself, uh, granting the town protection in exchange for something, but it doesn't say what. Um, Veridonia, by the way, is a country that is bordering uh, Umberfell. Does it have um, a theme that we know about the way like Slandria is the moon, Umberfell's shadows? Is that have like sea or... Well, forest or it's very magically inclined which i mean a war of dark magic which has was just mentioned makes mm -hmm. sense right uh next who was the next up there who got i think there was a 20 uh so uh, you got higher right didn't you no i got a 20 i got a 21 you got a 20 and anemone you got a 20 as well okay so for the 20s you find um, Tales of the Town Elders. So it's a compilation of local fol folklore. I can say that word. Um, about Mossy Bark's Guardians. It's called Mossy Bark, Mossy Bark's Guardians, Truth or Legend. Uh, there's a chapter dedicated to the town elders uh, that are revered as the town's protectors. The book includes a two-page sketch of this grand house that overlooks the, the town of Mossy Bark. Um, annotations kind of by like a very long forgotten scholar uh, suggest that the house was built on perhaps a ley line or um, some sort of potent magic. Uh, the house is, is implied to be both a sanctuary and a prison designed to contain and control vast amount of magic. Um, and then for our, so our highest two were a 21 and a 20 something else, right? Someone else higher than that and a 24. So the 21, uh, you find a, a journal that is basically, um, it's called a, a covenant of shadows. And it's discreetly tucked away behind a bunch of other books. Um, you almost overlooked it. 
It's penned by an anonymous author. Um, and it chronicles. Ow, it chronicles ow, 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 sorry, I thought I was muted. Cat, tack, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the observations and sus suspicions about the town elders. So it, it connects them to uh, mysterious disappearances of citizens um, and delves into a ritual that kind of hints at sacrifice the sacrifice of souls for power um the journal's final entry is very omin ominously suggests that the author has been discovered and may lead to their own disappearance uh and then with a 24 you find hair in my mouth you find something called the arca the arcanum primordialis and it is written in ancient Sylvan, a dialect only few know in the modern age. But luckily, being the person that you are, Sin, you comprehend languages. You know, <laughs> not even that. You grew up in the library that with your with your parents. Um, you would. This would be something that you would be able to read. Um, or at least, like, it's like reading Shakespeare for you. Okay. Um, it's like a mouthful, but I... Yeah, you. Yeah, it's flowery, it's a mouthful, Bible but you can... study, you know. <laughs> um, so, the description is that basically it's a tome that's shrouded in mists of antiquity its pages bound in leather that seems to shift in hue under the light uh the text within inscribed in flowing scripts of ancient sylvan speaks of a time when gods walked the earth uh in the dawn of astalia when the firmament still whispered secrets to the void the gods in their infinite wisdom and curiosity descended upon the mortal realm where their divine essence first graced the earth, god stones emerged, crystalline manifestations of the of their power and pre of their power and presence, each unique to the de the deity that it represented, that the stone represents. Uh, the god stones scattered across the land became conduits of magic, sources of great power, and artifacts of immense religious significance. I'm going to say with a 24, you continue on through that book and you find um, you find a goddess called Magira. She is the goddess of arcane mysteries. Um, she's goddess of magic, hidden knowledge, is a figure shrouded in mystery herself. Unlike the other gods, Magira's presence is not always felt, but rather discovered in the whispers between the lines of ancient texts in the shimmer of a spell cast at the edge of dusk and in the depths of arcane knowledge itself she is the patron of seekers spellcasters and those who dare venture beyond the veil um the veil of reality to grasp the threads of magic that weave the universe together um and she has has a significant following in Veridonia. Um, Veridonia was the country next to Umberfell, where gotcha. the refugees Got are said to have made come from to make mossy bark. Um, and it even mentions the diamond godstone of Mo and it being associated with Magira. Um, obviously formed at the moment of her divine touch upon the earth, on the land um, deep within the heart of what is now known as uh, Ver Verdantia um, Verdantia city, which is the capital of Veridonia. Um, unlike other God stones, Magira's diamond does not merely radiate magical power. It acts as a prism refracting and amplifying magical energies around it. Uh, bending the fabric of reality to the will of its wielder. It is said that the diamond can unlock uh, potentialities of magic. Um, 
offering glimpses into the arcane secrets that even the gods have kind of kept secret and hidden. I have hair in my mouth. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. Uh, it's capable of great protection, but also great destruction if misused. Uh, it talks about Magira's covenant in her instant, in the infinite wisdom and foresight. She's imposed a covenant on the gods on the godstone, which only those that prove themselves worthy uh, through understanding of magic and and its true nature may wield and use the power itself. And I'm going to say, with Anemone, with your role, because you did really well, I'm going to give you a D8 to add to that. Because at currently, Galen happens to be helping you uh, look around. A one? A one. 21. 21. I thought you already had a 21 with the D. No, 19 plus 1 plus 1. I didn't get any guidance. guidance. Oh, I have guidance still? Yeah. Yeah. You can cast guidance once every six seconds. Oh, so that's a 25 altogether because I rolled okay. a 4. Nice. So 4, Perfect. 1, 1. Nice. So 6 plus 19. So 19 plus 1, 24. I like to think Clover was doing guidance by look by, by looking at the bottom shelves where it's easier for her to read stuff <laughs> than other people. Oh, oh. actually, um, while we're looking for stuff and Galen's helping and Clover's helping, um, Annie is gonna whisper towards Clover, "Hey, um, do you remember the poem? What it said again?" Also, thank yeah. you, Speed of Candy, for 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 Bardic inspiration. I appreciate that. Aww. We think which out. part of the poem were you interested in, Anemone? Can you can you repeat the thing about the stones again? Like where each location is? Because I feel like we and and maybe is there a map? We um, don't know the locations for all of them. I, I just yeah. I want to see a map. That's there is, just the, the, map. there is no map of like locations, it, it, like a general map of the like. An atlas? Yeah. Um, so oh, you weren't here, but no. the prince did show you an atlas and show point out like where Mossy Bark was. So okay, okay. Galen definitely has one. She pulls it out for you. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Galen. What are you um, looking for? She's gonna look for she's gonna sit on the floor. <laughs> so with her twenty five in front of that lowest shelf with Clover in front of her. With this atlas in front of her, she's sitting cross-legged and she looks at, at at Galen and Clover. With that 25, what do I find, DM? You wanna you're looking at the map for the 25? Or no, no, no. do you Just... want the special thing that I made for you? You 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 tell me if you want to look at the map. I want to take it. I want to I want to take the twenty five thing that you made because I think you made it and I think you made it for a reason. I would like to know. Okay, thank you. You happen to be. You're so tall compared to everyone else. You're able to look up at the higher shelves, and something catches your eye. There is a few books on. Basically, lore of I hate you, uh, Nurgle, Nurgleanu, Nurgleanu, the Night Sentinel. That's fine. We can go with the Night Sentinel, Nurgleanu. No, hang on, Nurgleanu, 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 Nurgleanu. Yes, fuck you. Nurgleanu. Nurgleanu. fuck you for writing that. <laughs> <laughs> Nurgleanu. I'm never gonna forget that. It's all Babylonian, guys. Oh shit, I. I can't, can't even speak it. English. Like, why would you do this to me? Um, <laughs> Which is why I gave you the title. You find, and what catches your eye is you find something written in Elder Draconic, which is an ancient tongue that is literally only known to dragons and their kin. And for some reason, Anemone, you can read it. Here is what you find. 
you find some lore of Nurgle Anu. And it reads, in the tapestry of the cosmos, where stars weave the destiny of all beings, Nurgle Anu, the night sentinel, reigns supreme in the domain of death and passage. This deity, depicted with scales of black and gold and red, embodies the dual nature of an end and a beginning, watching over the Emberfell tribe with a protective gaze that pierces through the veil between realms. Nurgle Anu's followers, a tribe known for their deep connection with the mysteries of the night, honor their god through the rituals that embrace the transformative power of the underworld. The under they understand that in every ending comes a new start, a, a cycle in a cycle eternal as night as the ugh, fuck my life a cycle as eternal as the night sky itself it continues on to talk about the onyx godstone the nebula central to their worship is the nebula an artifact of profound power and beauty this onyx gem suffused with the celestial light gleams with gleams like frag like a fragment of the night sky made manifest the nebula is said to be a piece of nergalinu's own essence a gift to the emberful tribe of teramora to guide them in their times of darkness and uncertainty however the whereabouts of the nebula have become the stuff of legends its presence lost to the tribe and to the world in its absence, the tribe, the tribe's connection to Nurglanu's we has Nurglanu. Fuck that! Let that goddamn word. Nurglanu, but do call him Nurgi. Nurgi, Nurgi, Nurgi. 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 It Sounds like Nurgle. Annie, though, Annie would call would one thousand percent call him the Night Sentinel. Um, would never use her as full name. Well, if that have helps. you guys played Warhammer or seen Warhammer? Nurgle is one of the. I think it's based on Nurglanu. Nurgle. Grandpa Nurgle. Papa um, Nurgle. And basically, it's protective aura that once enshrouded that and protected the tribe is faded. Uh, you also find a little bit in that book. Um, so, I lost my place. Hang on. Um, you find another tome that is called The Chronicles of the Night oh, yeah. Sentinel and the Nebula, and the Nebula, and uh, it's a tome of unparalleled significance, written in again Elder Draconic, uh, chronicling, chronicling the history, the worship, the mysteries of the Night Sentinel and um, the Onyx Godstone, known as the Nebula. Uh, it's encased in covers that like shimmer with subtle luminescence uh reminiscent of starlight uh the tome is a compendium of lore prayers rituals um all de dedicated to the night sentinel it speaks of again when the night sentinel touched down the nebula was formed um and about the about the significance of death and rebirth, the cycle that he is known for. Um, yeah. You find something that no one else can read, and yet you can. Annie is... Annie brings all of these books down in front of the atlas as she's reading through it. So Clover and Galen are the only two can who can see that she's actually reading, reading this book, like the three books that she's like, whatever she's found, she's actually reading, reading it. Yeah, completely. And what she's not even she's not even that? fussed with it. Can, can 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 you read that? Oh yeah, it's great. It's called the Chronicles of the Night Sentinel and the Nebula. 
What language is that? Wait, Wait um, what? Draconic? Elder Draconic, if the language of my people, we roar. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> It's just something Kaylin that looks I shocked. know. Yeah, just... Sin is going to lean over and look at it because she's like, wait, there's a language that you know that I don't? What? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just always known it. Uh, my my people know weird languages. It's talking about one of the tribes that I know, though. My tribe. Specifically my tribe. Mm, I don't think that's your tribe. It, mm, you it said isn't? that that was uh, Eli's tribe. Oh, that's true. Okay, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, Who's okay, Eli? Okay, Who's okay. Eli? Yeah, who's Eli? Huh. Huh. <laughs> also, huh. your tribe wouldn't be able to read this. Hmm. Wait, is she like reading this and not realizing that this, like, it's just naturally happening? 1,000%. Yeah. It's 110%, one of those things. Yeah. One, one, so, one of those I, things. I think then, if you permit me, when you're like, oh, yeah, I know this language, it's easy. I think Sin would be like, Annie, you shouldn't be able to read this. This is not just any draconic. This is a very sacred, only dragons allowed to speak draconic. You could call it a closed practice language. Uh-huh. I yeah. have a 100%. theory. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a theory. theory. Um, Anemone, bodies. could you could you try something for me? Could you try closing one of your eyes and seeing if you can read it, and then doing the other one? Oh, that's so smart. Hey, hey. Annie's <laughs> gonna be like, okay, that we'll try. Smart. I just just try both of them one at a time and see what happens. Oh, right, one at a time. Um, left to right. <laughs> Dealer's you, choice. Okay, you do uh, that one and then the other. She'll start with the left eye open, right eye closed. Which is the special eye that you have? Leaders? Special the eyes. left eye. No, hold on. The right eye, I think. Okay, is so the we're right starting left. With... Maybe just say I do it with my special eye, then I do it with my regular eye. Yeah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> I, I, do it with my, I, I do my regular eye and then my special eye. Your regular eye, I mean, that looks like gibberish. But with your special eye, that all makes perfect sense. It's like you're reading so a comment. So smart. You're so smart. <sighs> Just thought it was worth an experiment. That's intriguing, isn't it? What does that mean? If I may, I actually... So I can... One of the powers granted to me by Nyx is the ability to decipher languages I normally wouldn't be able to read. Not all, but a lot. Uh, it is a magical enhancement. It's possible that Annie's eye is also blessed with the ability to decipher, if not any language, at least this. Where Have we ever asked you about your eye? <laughs> Were you born with You're it? You're muted. I was, feel like that was a, a very personal thing. I it, think it, we never why... discussed it. You guys just accepted me, especially during training. Because you're amazing. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, my now, blood sister. I but, do have you know. questions. <laughs> Were you born with this eye? No. May I huh. ask how you came to acquire it? I don't really remember. All I remember has been I was traveling with my teacher. He he's also anyway. Um, I was I was traveling with my teacher, and we came across a thing, and something happened, and I woke up, and he he was standing over me, and he said he taught me all that I he could, and. I went to Eli's tribe and then I came here um, and I had the eye. The eye then, came but... when he stood over you before or after you? I'm sorry, what? I don't remember. You I what? Don't remember. You... Hmm, sorry, all of the innuendos today. It's fine. I'm the only one that got that one. It's fine. How it? How was that an innuendo? It's my eye. 
It's fine. Nothing. It's fine. I'll explain it to you later can, during can our I, talk. Sorry. Sorry. Can I can I come closer and <clears throat> look at the eye? Sure. It looks like a very golden looking draconic eye. And yeah, the can iris I investigate itself, it? Yeah. Can I roll investigation or you something? You can roll investigation. Eye? Go for it. Okay. Uh, um so what happened? You said you encountered something? Was it a monster or something? No, we went dungeon delving for something and I was there for muscle and training because it was trying to he was trying to, you know, teach me how to wield weapons and I'm what pretty good. I as you're talking, I'm like like shining. I, I like cast light on my fingertip and I'm like doing ow, it. Okay, oh. okay. Ow, I'm not ow, I'm sorry, ow. I'm sorry. I just try to um, look. anemone. Yeah. Light on the fingertip doesn't bother you. In fact, okay. uh, the light seems to just go get absorbed by this eye. Fascinating. Um, 21. What are you... I mean... Okay, what... so this, this is the, the checklist. I am comparing the shape and design to... Does this look like a dragon eye? Because it clearly doesn't look humanoid. Um, does it look like an organic thing or a magical mm -hmm. construct like i'm just like trying to figure out what this is is there a wound near the eye um as in was her eye transformed or was it replaced or like i'm really looking around all the nooks and crannies to see um i'm doing a test to see if it follows if it follows along with her regular eye or if it seems independent like a little mad eye so <laughs> 21 is really good um a really good role what you get from that, I'm going to say, at first you're doing this and her eyes are are uh, following both together back and forth. You kind of uh, lean in closer with the uh, with the light on your finger and you see uh, is the light being absorbed by this eye. And then the eye, it doesn't even seem like Anemone notices, follows your finger this way. And her other one is just talking to you. She didn't even, like, it It doesn't even oh, look like she has noticed that. Uh, it's reptilian, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like, it sort of does look like a wound. Mm. In a sense. Like, it looks like, it, it, it sort of does look like a wound around there. Um, it's got some scales. If you look her very face? close. Yeah. If you look closely, <gasps> there are the same color as her skin right now, but they look some... like there are tiny scales. Oh, no. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. You know the scene in Baldur's Gate where Volo... Just kidding. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, I'm going to take all this information. Clover pulls an ice pick out of her. <laughs> uh, <gives> you. <laughs> Wait, I'm a little bit physically uncomfortable, Sin. You're breathing on my neck. Uh, I'm sorry, but... I back it, I back up a little bit. Uh, you um, had onions earlier today. I could smell I that. I did. I thought the tea rinsed them out. Oh, <laughs> tea. I have to get my teacups back for all Do you ones. want mints? I think I've got them. Somewhere. Yes, please. Here. This is important. Great. Do you ha you have scales on your face? Yeah, I've uh, always had the scales on my face. Is, were you born with this? She just said, so you just said that you were not born with this eye? No. Did you always have scales around that eye? Could I roll a history check? Because I don't know. But you I don't make know. that decision. You, <laughs> I, I feel like you okay. would know that. So it's very good. It's it's very good that you definitely um, wrote that back part of your backstory. Uh, no, here. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, go I'm going to say some shade you from did the DM. not have those scales beforehand no but, i did not have these scales so they came with the eye um are you aware that this eye is following my finger independent of your other eye is it doing now yes oh boy in fact it's you know dilated and is starting to like you know you ever see that mo like when a predator like in a reptilian predator that moment that like their eyes dilates and then like follows something yeah uh, and then oh, uh, you're not mad at me right now are you 
I'm slowly getting annoyed because I see a finger being poked about <laughs> I'm not one. A, I, I'm, it's like, like you know when the doctor is shining. Yeah, a light. yeah, yeah. That okay. one finger is 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 right uh, in my face, in front of my my eye. Right. You know that is enough uh, investigation for now. Um, thank you. Very. Oh, can I, I have roll Arcana have to see if there's like a spell on it or something? One hundred percent. Yeah. Clover, Seven. you have a theory. <laughs> theory. Yeah. Well, it's not so much a theory as a slight worry. I wonder if there is some entity out there, like a dragon or some other kind of reptile that can actually see through that eye. Uh, give me, um, uh, not, not Scarlet, Sin, give me um, a perception check as that's being said. And what did you roll for your arcana? Seven. A seven. Oh, uh, you're not sure. <laughs> Can I retrospectively retroactively yeah, whatever? Reac guidance yeah. of reaction in this game. I don't, so. I don't know that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, this is going to get a whole lot of help from guidance. Um, I got a 19. A 19. Clover a asks two. that guidance? question. <laughs> and you see oh, the eye sorry. kind of snap from where you're, what you're doing down to Clover. Oh, I, I and then, shuttle and back up. like, And then it's back to being Anemone's eye again. Anemone, darling, I think somebody is looking. I think they're scrying. And I got a four tell. on the guidance, so that yeah, was a Yeah, you can't tell. Yeah. It, it, doesn't seem, oh it doesn't seem magical. Um, your tribe worships dragons, right? Yeah, we worship dragons. We've got four gods, actually, that we kind of. Do... I wouldn't. I, I personally, no offense, Galen. I know I can see you scribbling away over there. A hundred percent. She is. Yeah, she is yeah, just yeah. like, oh, God, what is happening? Um, I don't particularly feel comfortable about talking about that, if that's OK. Maybe when we're out in the wilderness and we're less surrounded by people, I can tell you. But for now, oh, okay. let's let's yes. let's table it. I Galen's have... just like, well, fuck me. Um, Galen, and, yeah, Galen I appreciate up. you, though. Galen, come here, come here. You have no, 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 it's OK. I'm going to go. Annie, I do have else. one final question and then we can table it. Is it possible that a draconic entity would mean you harm? I hope not. Okay. I yeah, mean, we're not friends. We, okay. we respect it, it dragons. Not... We have so, rituals for dragons. So we... if a dragon was looking, it's not a bad thing? It depends on the dragon. Because it... remember, remember the dragon that we had at the grove, the one without the eyes. And I mean, you, the dragon was... obsidian. Obsidian yeah. is is tied yeah. to. It's fine. We can table it. We can table it. I just we could, we could table it. We've yeah. already got but... one dragon looking at us all the time, invisible. What's another, right? Well, obsidian was a cool dragon, though. I'm talking no about lady. <laughs> Lee somewhere oh, is goodness. fuming. <laughs> um, and then he's like, listen, I'm not trying to offend Fleety, but I do like obsidian because they sure. are cool. I don't know that much about dragons. I don't know how many are friends and how many are foes. I just never considered until Clover said something that your eye might be a scrying eye. It could be a good thing or it could be a not so good thing. But we can we can cross that bridge when we get there. We have important things to worry hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, like back to this atlas and stuff. She's going to look at the books and go, hey, Galen, um, how much is it if I could take these books from you, if you don't mind? Oh, they're not for sale. Okay. <laughs> My penmanship <laughs> sucks. I'll help you. <laughs> Here, I'll, help. I'll okay, sit down okay, with Annie okay. and I'll just take whatever notes she wants. Okay, she's going to point out the information regarding Nergalanu Nergal and the nebula. You can't even see it! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <thank you. laughs> but instead of calling them Nergalanu, I just think it's write just down. Nergal knew. 
just Nurgle knew. Let's just go with uh, this is the Night Sentinel. Go yeah. by the title, not the name. If you say the name, you could get smited. Don't want to do that. So because you don't follow the religion, just go with the title. They're the Night Sentinel. Okay. Close religion. Got the, it. Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. They're talking about one of these things. And remember in this thing, it said about an onyx, right? Well, it's. Could you repeat that poem again, Clover? The whole thing? Sure. I have it in my uh, notes. No. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Just think about the stones. I, I just need to know about the stones because it sounds like the stones the whole, are in location. The whole poem is about the, the, yeah, about the stones. Yeah, the whole poem. No, each... no, no, no. I'm talking about like where it says sapphire. I'll, and... I'll, read, the t I'll read it again. Okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, One sec. Let me get it out. It's in the lore channel, by the yep. way. <laughs> I have it yeah. open if you like. So here you I go. If it. it helps, if it helps above board, just to simplify things a little bit. Um, my intention through Annie is um, particularly for Annie trying to figure all of this out because she's smart, but she's 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 just a little bit above average. She's not super, super smart, but she's trying to figure out whether or not there's a connection between the stones and the locations. Um, and if she can figure out based on the description of the locations, maybe the very distinct areas that could be those places. Mm -hmm. I'll read you the poem again and you can tell me if you think that there are locations in that okay so when darkest darkness claims the land against it all six women stand collect the stones which can be found where first stood gods upon the ground find the diamond left by magic used by sisters thrice as tragic where peace and light defy the dark hidden deep in mossy bark which, you know, is a town nearby. Then in the coldest winter realm, a sapphire gift to crown your helm. Uh, the god of weather left behind a gift to give when vows are signed. Then venture home, seek tiger's eye, left with one to skill to die. The gift of war in war's own hand, return you must to Luna's land. The next you'll find beneath the waves, where breathing folk would find their graves. The, uh, sorry, god of waters, aquamarine, in the hands of the swimming queen. Then back to darkness, back to the start, where the rest, where rests the ruby of the heart, the gift of life within the grasp of one who's long since breathed their last. The last I give to you, your, uh, the last I give to start your quest. Hurry now and seek the rest. For only on convergence night can gods be stilled and fate set right. Lucky, listening to it once more, Annie's going to go, okay. Do we know information? Like it's about an eclipse, right? That's convergence night? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. And he's going to really think deeply about this. Um, and then she's going to go looking at the atlas in front of her, like rudimentary map in front of her. And she'll mm -hmm. go, okay, so we have an idea of where the coldest realm is, right? And we know that the third place we need to go back to is Luna's land. We don't That's, know its location. No, but I'm assuming she's looking around like I'm, I'm assuming this is this is a quest chart thing right so mossy bark is first this third one we can figure out is once we have the gift of war or whatever that is the tiger's eye we have to go back to luna's land so we have to go back to solstice yeah so solstice mm -hmm. you can yeah. so luna's land so, yeah so we have to go back there so based on our locations we've got mossy bark first well we're here first and then mossy like we have to go to mossy bark that's that's place number one. Place number three is Ostasia, right? Yes. More well, specifically, um, Salandria, because I know mm. who war is. Um, and I know where he hangs out. 
he. Okay. Um, he, they, you know, he, they. dual he, pronouns, they. but you know, yeah. Yeah. We love, we will, we love all people. I, don't, I love all yeah, people. Yeah. Well, it's I not that know. fond of me. Yeah. It's yeah. the only thing. Huh? You are going to need have to have that chat him? soon. Do we have to stab him? Is this another one of those things where Delphi's going to have to get the fork thing in a situation we nearly die again? I mean, I'm fine stabbing people. Actually stabbing uh, people, not just throwing forks at their heads. Hmm. Plates are not great for shields. Delphi pipes up, but they are good for frisbees! <laughs> they are. And crown. Ooh. We, Ooh. We're going to need to get that leash before we go to the <laughs> war. You can't um, stop me! And then she just takes off. <laughs> uh, I might have to learn the whole person spell. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, she's a little wise, though. Which is weird. I would never expect that. Oh, dear. You know, sometimes oh, I love, children I love are wise. Gifts. Winter Realm, wise though. like a child. That's that makes sense. Yeah. One second. Um, sorry, guys. One moment. I I'll be right back. All right. As the thing that uh, occurs to me, why is the nebula here in the catacombs? Hmm. What is the final verse? I think it. It. Let me pull it up. And I'm just. The last I give to start your quest, hurry now and seek the rest, for only on convergence night can gods be stilled and fate set right. So the last yeah. I give to start How your did... quest is, is the, the nebula. Yeah. Yeah. How did the nebula get from where Nogalanu touched down to here? Right? right. That's, that's what you're asking? Yeah. Right. It, I'm, it was valuable if... to those people. So... What if... What if the dark mm. sentinel is the one who gave it to us? Because it says the last I give to the last I give to start your quest. Who and is the yeah, I? Who's, who's writing the poem? Who wrote the yeah. poem? Who can say an enemy? Annie's looking at this <laughs> poem, like the bits and pieces of this poem, very deeply, and she looks up at her name and she goes, "What? What's up?" Um, wait, so the Night Sentinel mm -hmm. is the keeper of the nebula, right? The Onyx Stone? Yeah, maybe. And it says in the poem... Can I do a religious check just to reconfirm that I that Annie actually knows what she's she's considering because she's she's kind of looking she's mm -hmm. she's asked yes. basically what she has asked galen to do is to write down darkest darkness and then she asked them to write down basically places things that sound like places so mossy bark coldest winter realm she's asked them to write down luna's land mm -hmm. and then she's asked them beneath the waves then back to darkness and then she's looking and then she asked them to write down where gods um, last stood, or the where the gods touched down. Like those are that's what she's asking them to write down. Yeah, it's like okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. cool and cool, then cool. while you're writing I think that I'm down, I'm here to be a note taker, but I can't know about any of the stuff that you just just bitching under her breath. Continue. Um, so if it helps I'm... you with your notes, there's four tribes, okay. Thank there's you, yes. four uh -huh. tribes, yep. okay. There's Ember Fall. There's Crimson Moon, Ebon Reach, and Spirit Shade. Those are the four. Uh -huh. And the Night <laughs> Sentinel is the patron of one of those or all of them? Uh the <sighs> Let is, me think about this. The Night Sentinel would be more heavily worshipped by Amberfall, but all of them, all of these gods are common in Terramora. Which tribe are you from, Anemone? Um, it's a long story, but my my tribe no longer quite exists. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, so it wasn't one of these four. There was a fifth. I it's hard to explain because tri tribe means like a vast majority of people 
mine was more like a family that was set apart from the tribe. We, we were just part of the tribe. I mean, if you need to know a connection, I mean, the closest connection would be <sighs> mm, Emberfall. Is that right, Dan? No. Um, no, it's not. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm confused myself. I wrote down names. Okay. okay. Up, I'm above, looking at it. Above table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to confirm. Are we guessing that the writer of the poem is Nurgle New? Because you, you that's my assume. that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to assume in character. But I think that we keep like getting on tangents. I'm just trying to like get a confirmation you can that, that is that that is you a like. working. I I would like to hear like that's my working hypothesis. If I, Nurgle I, New is associated, I'm not so sure. Yeah. yeah, same. I, I think that whoever wrote the poem is some unknown entity kind of above all of this. But N Nurgle Anul, the Night Sentinel, is one of the six gods that's being referenced by, you know, these six gods touch down in various places and each of them produced sure. like a stone, right? Sure. Um, so I have no idea who the fuck wrote the poem, but my idea is, my, my theory is that it's just some big unknown entity above all of this who took some little new stone or who just knows happens to know where it is and says well, we here you go we, here's the first stone but he gave it to like we have it like he yeah he... you do have the onyx yeah that's why i'm like right. uh who has the authority to give that to us unless it was either stolen or i'm just totally well, misunderstanding it, it could it have did, been stolen i did say that it it did go missing yeah. Oh, it did go mm. missing? Yes. Okay, I yeah. didn't miss that bit. Yeah, that's why I was wondering how it got here, because it's like, if it was stolen, was it stolen by, like, the okay. Spire and Tenebrosa? Did they steal the Onyx and put it in their catacombs? Or is there somebody else that's connected to all of this that Maybe we just we don't know about yet? Does anyone else even know it was down here? Does the prince know it was down here? Well, yes, because we were told, or as as not necessarily this particular. We were told, we were told before we went down that we were looking for a stone that had, uh, uh, that was a black stone that had nebulas and stuff inside it, okay, um, so and stars and whatnot. Who, so we were told of that? the existence of the stone. Who said that? Good question. I also yeah. kind of. I, I would think the prince or Oswald. Yeah. Okay. So it's aware. Then, if it was Oswald, I might want to go ask him. <clears throat> hey, how, do you, what do you know about this, and how long has it been here? Yeah. And what does it mean to you? What does it mean to the country? Yeah. Also, does it mm -hmm. kind of seem like the Moonstone is not a Godstone? I would you like to do some sort of checks to figure that out? Yeah, but let me put my logic yeah. together first and then make the check. So my logic is we were told the moonstone was a chunk of the moon that fell down and Nyx and Luna are both claiming, making claim on it. Uh, that sounds like a different lore than these six stones. Mm -hmm. So well, I, it's like while they're all stones and powerful, it, the moonstone sounds like an outlier. Mm, could be. Uh, okay, well, I would say, though, if we're talking about the gods, like, coming to Earth and, like, where they touched down, where they made contact, these stones were created, if a piece of the moon, if the moon is the body Ooh. of the goddesses, yes. falls to the Earth, that is a form of touching down on the Earth, right? Okay, and then we would have to yeah. just consider Nixaria and Luna as their, like, twin like they're not separate yeah. deities they're like, right you can't have one without the other yeah they're of kind of being counted they both gemini share. <laughs> they, that's why they're fighting mm. over it probably because yeah it's like that's fine mm. no it's fine no it's fine <laughs> I, can't yeah. I also i so. also <laughs> um would it be possible to get some some a little bit of clarification from last last time's game because obviously it wasn't there and i'm just reading over um clover's notes once more mm. um the things that we can confirm is that we have the onyx stone and we're starting from the last place, right? Because it's a, it, because the, the last I give. Yeah. Yeah. The last I give to start your quest. So we're here. The stone is here and we have the stone. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Like it's on our person, mm-hmm. but it's not on our person. You, you have it. You have it. It's, it's I have it. it. I handed yeah. it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in your pocket. And he's going to take it. This. You know what? Hold on. Yeah. 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 Hold on. I hold totally on. forgot that you weren't here last week. And that yeah. makes a lot of sense now. Like where, your where questions like, are making sense. I'm like, um, <laughs> there's some 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 stuff that I'm like trying to figure out based on the notes that I, I'm reading. Um, and I just got to the thing. So we also know that. OK, a couple of things. Because we're still here in Umberfell. Um, Mossy Bark was a town in Umberfell. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And that is a week's travel from where we are. And it was a quiet, quiet farming town. Yes. So we're going to ask, we were supposed to ask Galen about Mossy Bark. And we got that information from them already. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we know that with Mossy Bark, after Mossy Bark, it it's very close to Viridonia. Yes. That would be for where the diamond would be. Yeah. No, okay. the Mossy Bark is where the diamond might be. But okay. Mossy Bark is a ref... It, the people who live there are refugees from that country where the god... Who's related the goddess... Um, what was her name? Magira. Ma- Magira. Magira. That's right. Sounds like Bagheera. Okay. Magira, um, she's related to the diamond, but I think they took it to Mossy Bark because that's where it says we're going to find it. What I wonder is who are these sisters? Thrice is tragic. Is there anything? Did anybody find anything about that when you were looking up Mossy Bark? I just assumed the sisters. We might find out when we get to us. Mossy Bark. What? Oh, I just assumed another it was theory, us. perhaps. This is just tragic. Could be... Well, I'm I wondering mean, if this sure, is like perhaps a... the town elders. Sorry. Yeah. Or something. But yeah. maybe we'll find out when we get to Mossy Bark. You know, we we there's only so much we can find out by sitting in a library. At some point, we you well, know. Well, I'm looking at this map, and so number first place was Umberfell. Would Umberfell be the darkest dark? I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give this to you um when dark is dark that first little stanza there that's just like when this when dark is dark you can assume that that's the the eclipse that's what I was thinking too is it just like how because mm-hmm. yeah and uh, the the whole thrice as tragic thing it didn't occur to me we we're talking three people I was like three times as tragic as the average human or person or whatever yeah because it, it I'm it could be both ways. I mean, it could it be It might either. be, and also six is divisible by three, and it just kind of all worked out in my brain. But Maybe we're yeah. going to have to face three too literally. tragedies while we're there. Um, Annie's going to look at the note Galen has, and she's actually just going to double check something quickly. She's going to write down, besides the stuff that she has, because in her to above board as a player this is what i'm writing the first and the last are the same so we are starting with tenebrosa first and we're finishing in tenebrosa first and last are the same well the and, last one we already have it no 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 oh, you mean then back to darkness back to the start yeah that's tenebrosa oh, yeah, yeah, yeah would it be either tenebrosa or luna's land because it's back to the start and it says back to the darkness. So for Annie, it's like, I think okay, it's well, here. Tenebrosa. Yeah, so that makes so sense. we're starting in Tenebrosa and we're ending in Tenebrosa. And we have to end in Tenebrosa because I think that's where we're going to gather all the little uh, stuff yeah. together. We have yeah. like a special little walk-in closet being built for us to with pedestals to display each stone and like a little lighting, a little <laughs> plaque. Maybe even if you like wave your hand in front of it, a voice will start speaking and give us like the general history of the stone and some fun facts, you know. Where you know what? I, and what do you do with the stones? That's Galen. Like when you have them all, what are you doing? We line them up like like the plants. I don't know. I what? kind of look, I don't know, but I kind of hope that this poem seems to have great faith in us, the six women, right? Um, 
So, you know, honestly, I'm kind of inclined to follow the instructions of the poem with a little, just a little bit of blind faith in there, because it, it clearly lays out, do this, then, you know, find the diamond, do the this, that, that. And it clearly says, then do this, then do that. It's like instructions in order. And by the time, look, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm just hoping that by the time we get to the end and we have all of these stones, that at that point, we will know what to do with them, or it will become apparent, you know, I mm -hmm. I think maybe we just leave for Mossy Bark. It's going to take us a week to get there, and we've only got two months. We got, yeah. you know. Two, we do have two months to, right, for, for the, the eclipse. eclipse. Okay, yeah. so here's, here's. And that's a lot of travel. Here's the thing. This is why I want to know our locations, because if we're going to be traveling for two months, we should at least plan out those two months in case anything happens. So we're starting here in Tenebrosa. We already have stone number one we're going to get the other five stones then so the next stone would be the diamond the second stone is the winter the third stone is the winter realm so she's going to look right at cappy and go i think we have to go where fleety is yeah i i think that's yeah i mean that's it sounds like that's it we don't know where the swimming queen is but I'm with Clover. I think we really just need to start and start doing these things in order, and we need to start soon. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to go beneath the water, we should have some... She, Annie's like thinking about, okay, so we're going someplace. Okay, we need to prepare. What do I pack? This is what Annie's... We this is how Annie's already thinking. Bit. We're going to come back here between missions, I think, so we can drop the stones that we collect off for safety. So we can think about packing wow. for the ocean after we get back from... Didn't we all have plus, water breathing plus questions? Plus the, the ocean thing. Look, if it's we have to like go to the ocean, if, we, if we're doing this one at a time, Anemone, I always wonder if you're overthinking it because by the time we get to the ocean one, which is like four gems away from now, um, we will have already had to go back to Salandria, which is, which is a city. We can prepare, you know, like – we can prepare all that stuff in the city while we're there. I honestly Okay, okay, okay. I am definitely overthinking it. Um, I'm gonna get my gear. She's gonna look over at Galen and then look over at Sin, who's halfway in between another journal in between writing notes and go, I'm gonna go prepare. I would really like the books. Is there a way to no. copy these books? I'm other no. than by hand. No. No. <laughs> Also, are you going to leave tonight? Uh, no, maybe tomorrow. Why not? Well, I think we need to rest. I, you know, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, we yeah. just got we, back from the planetary and we, we haven't even slept today. yet. <laughs> mm. Let's go tomorrow, tomorrow morning. First, okay. first thing. First light. First light. First light. <sighs> Annie's going to kind of look at the books and say, okay. Well, for the first time, like she's actually eyeing the books. Mm -hmm. For the very first time, you see her actually covet, <laughs> actually reading something. <laughs> um, <laughs> before she goes, okay, okay, um, okay. Well, if we're spending the night, I do want to go to that place where spirits, that spirit place. I want to go there. That's where I want to go. Can you? Talk you talked to the night sentinel there, didn't you? Yeah. Can you do that again? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think and she's taking these books away from you. <laughs> um I think um you guys should chill, rest, have dinner, and I will, you know, we can I'll continue to decipher the poem and stuff while you guys are gone getting that first stone. Does that help? That would yeah, be lovely. Thank, you. Amazing. thank you so much, Galen. Yeah, it's not not thank a problem. You. And I think I could probably get Lady Orion to help with the star stuff as well, the star parts of that. So Um Galen? Yes. Uh, I had a couple other things I wanted to ask you about. Okay. Um, I was I was looking to see I, I, you know like I, I know that uh, anemone is getting armor and things, um, but that doesn't really um, 
I don't use armor. I, I, you know, do you have anything magic that could help me? Like, I don't like scrolls or, or something I could learn. Didn't you, did you go see her already? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So what spell? Um, there was a spell we made. I cannot for the life of me. It's in your equipment. Yeah. This is, this is me asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's going to, uh, she's going to go, I have a book of spells I can lend you. I don't I... really have like, um, things other than books. I, I'll take whatever you have. That would be helpful. Do you have like a preference? Um, I, I don't, I'm not really good at, at book learning spells. Okay. Uh, so she goes and she gets out like a beginner's book. <laughs> a beginner's, like... And Cappy takes one level in wizard. <laughs> yeah. A is for Arcana. I love that. Arcana <laughs> banana. I love it. Um, and I had uh, one other question. Um, uh -huh. And I, I like get up to her ear and, and whisper this. She bends down. Do you have anything about fey bargains? Come with me back here. And she takes you away from the girls. Mm -hmm. um, what about fey bargains? Well, just kind of um, how, uh, maybe how like, you might be able to change them or adjust or uh, get out of them maybe or or just maybe um, more ab about like i just want to understand like how they work so from what i've read and again like you look and you can see her <laughs> her novel about the fae um smooshed on the floor somewhere uh she she has what i've from what I understand, um, uh, all mm, fey bargains are done in verbally, so uh, they can twist them in whichever way that they want. Um, it would really de depend on the wording of that of that bargain. Um, yeah, if the you would have to get the Fae to release you. A lot of the times that magic, that the bargain itself is how magic is created for them. So, um, can, if something were to happen to the Fae, would the bargain still stand? Um, I mean, it depends. I think. I mean, no Fae. Unless the bargain's already, like, unless something's already happened. No fey, no, no deal kind of thing, right? Yeah, I, I'm just, you know, I, this is, I mean, this, I'm just curious. Um, This is, you know, not, not like, not making plans or anything, just really just curious. Um, Do you know fey? Yeah. Yeah, um, oh. I really, I, I don't really want to, I don't really want to get into it, um, but. Okie dokie. Yeah, I, I guess I just, um, uh, also is it, is it really common to, to get, like, weird dark magic from Fey Bargains? I mean, that depends on what you, uh, you bargained for. Okay. And who gave it to you? Do, do different fae give different kinds of magic? I mean, probably, most likely. Different fae... I mean, it really depends on what the fae... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just... I mean, an arch fae of, like, a river wouldn't give you fire magic, right? So, an archfey of, say, winter wouldn't give you, like, weird necrotic magic, right? I mean, he might. Uh, winter is, um, 
what happens to tissue when it gets cold, right? When tissue dies and oh, it's a necrosis. Hmm. I didn't think of it like that. I always just thought of winter as, you know, cozy and eulstis and snowflakes and Winter can be very, well, obviously very harsh, right? You've, uh, you've, if you've ever seen um, a body that's been frozen, I mean, they turn blue. There are parts that are like frostbite and stuff. It, you, you, your skin dies. And... Yeah, this is a happy conversation. Right. Um, okay. I, uh, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Um, that, that's helpful. Is there anything you want me to, like, look into for you? I I mean, it sounds like there's there's not really a lot you can do. I, I just think, um, I just want to make sure that um, there's not um, maybe other ways to, to get out of a, a bargain without... Um, harming uh you know someone or um... i mean you could try and outsmart them you could find out their true name and use that against them they don't like that though yeah i kind of got that idea okay um if i think of anything i'll i'll ask i i just don't really know what else to think about right now okay um I Can hope you, um... whatever fake deal you got yourself entangled into doesn't go poorly for you. Same. Um, do you mind keeping this between us? Yes, I will keep this between us. Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. Bye. And <laughs> she just goes, <laughs> she's just awkward. I love um, <laughs> We're going to take a five minute break uh, and then we will pick up as, with you guys, I don't know, going to dinner and resting for the night. Mm -hmm. And then More we're going weird. on a girl road trip. Girls trip. <laughs> Girls trip. I can't a banana on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Precise precision. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Annie wasn't here for our can of banana. No, okay. she was not. Our can I of did, Wait, wait. Did I miss miss hot guys in can of it? Wait, can, wait. No. Our can of can banana. Of wrong one. Is wrong one. an in universe like boogie tropical funk band. Yeah. That w we are all fans of. Uh, <laughs> it just kind of came from. I don't know which one of us said it, but like. It you just were became, saying, was it me? You were saying, can I make an arcana check? And I've never heard it said arcana. I've only heard it said arcana. And it just triggered something in my mind. So I just said, can a banana. banana. And it's can just banana. turned into something bigger than what it was. Can a banana, 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 Yeah. 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 Like, doesn't it? Oh, God. It's perfect. So, yeah. So good. <laughs> so we all go, arcana, banana. <laughs> arcana, banana. Thanks for telling me. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five that he um, starts doesn't. to turn like count down and then doesn't do the last few numbers and it freaks me <laughs> out every time so in my head I'm like three two one you can talk hi I'm talking now though I know um, here we are I panic I full panic uh, so you guys go for dinner we um, absolutely go for dinner and no shenanigans will happen whatsoever. None whatsoever. Um, um do you want to ask Oswald about um about why the stone's here? Yeah, I guess I'll just like pull up a seat next to Oswald if he is I, some people don't like talking business at dinner cuz they just want to relax and have dinner, but if he is open to a discussion about godstones and specifically the onyx, I will ask him questions, but I'll also be like if he looks annoyed that I'm bringing work to dinner, uh, I'll drop it oh, and ask if my teacups are safe. Uh, he actually, when you, you when you come in, he's got them on the table beside him. Uh, hoping that you guys made it out okay. And uh, when you sit down, he's like, I am very glad to see that you made it out okay. 
Why'd you have to say it like that? Cheese. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like red right in my ear. Oof. Um, oh, yes. It was the information you gave us possibly saved our lives. He gives you a very lopsided grin. What um, does a lopsided grin look like? I fuck. I have one when I like <laughs> just a one okay. half, one half goes up. Oh, that's cute. Okay. So I, ret- I also give a lopsided grin. <laughs> so it, the thing that comes to mind when you say that, um, did anybody ever watch Chuck? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there's a point where like early Chuck on in the Sarah show. Forever. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that show so much. So there's a point in the very beginning where like really early on when he has like the, the, the hair with the funny animal shapes, um, only gonna get it if you've seen the show it's just silliness um where he kind of like waves at sarah from afar and he kind of like yeah like, just the one half goes up it's yeah it's really little... fucking cute i'll send the gif over to the there you go. thing it's adorable i was like those are too adorable. smiley right now yeah i know i just for- um, I forgot he talks like that so i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> uh um what do you do yeah yeah so shoot i guess i'll engage in some very polite small talk because again i'm like trying not to be annoying but i'm also oh you know what i'll i'll start telling him about our adventures i'll give him all i'll make it like a story i'll be like Uh Yeah, first he's, we were he's in, in there, invested. and then I like, yeah, I'm gonna look. My parents are librarians. I know how to tell a story. Uh, I'll make it really interesting, and I'll end it with us and the poem, and then finding the stone, and then I'll use that as like my opener into how much did you know about? Did you know that was down there? Like we're so surprised, we don't even know what to make of it. First, give me a performance check. Oh God. You said you were you were like you're gonna get it all. You're right. I just have not. You you've got charisma. Yeah. Guidance. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I'm, the the cat is doing interpretive dance to help you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. I got a twenty-five. A twenty-five. He is invested. This is such a good story. He's asking questions, um, I, like, and then pausing right at the most yeah. tense moments, and then like, and then bam, a ghost. Every now here. and then, he forgets <laughs> that he's actually eating, and he, like he's got his he fork just kind of <laughs> no, it's like stuck in the air as he's like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I think at sometimes I'll like push his hand to to oh close. The he, he looks a little him. embarrassed. <laughs> Um, I don't even notice that he's embarrassed. Yeah, it's just, it's all, it's the storytelling. I get into the storytelling of it. Um, I might have exaggerated some of like the more impressive feats of the sisters uh, just for flair. But um, yeah, so I'll just kind of like use that as like a nice segue into, and I have so many questions. Did you know that that was down there? Do you even know why the onyx was in there in the first place? We're so surprised. I knew there was a stone down there, but I'm not entirely sure where it came from. It has, we have had it a very long time. I see, I see. How fascinating. We're going to need to learn why, but we definitely need to find the other stones first. So fortunately, we have to leave in the morning. We'll be back, though. We'll be back as soon as we get the diamond. He, well, if you will be back. Then I will continue looking into a more permanent solution to hide you from Nexaria. And he also, as he's saying that, slides a uh, folded piece of paper towards you. Um, it's a it's a single scroll, and it's a very it's an altered version of non detection. Um. I'm that not was Scarlet sure. squeaking, not Sin squeaking. <laughs> I'm not sure if it will work. I did this myself, um, but it should give you a respite. From uh, I think Sin's eyes are going to start watering a little bit um, as she like just concerned. stares at it. You've already cried on him. He's like, "Oh God, yeah. what have I done?" Uh... <laughs> 
yeah she notices that he looks terrified and quickly composes herself and then gives him like a really warm smile thank you from of, from, of from the table a couple of tables down and Nemini is watching this not sure where Roz is but hope, hoping Cappy is with her and Clover no, after Roz, the is, inter- Roz is like okay. uh, uh, she's a, yeah she's obsessed right now she's just like yeah so all of us furtively glancing you know i've never seen her smile that big before. oh she's not furtively and she's just staring like she's, she's not fully subtle. like fully, fully entrenched like yeah she's and watching Nemini- her sto- she's watching her stories right now this is her story <laughs> and it's like when you tell me not very... to look and i'm like yeah oh yeah any Annie, dip any dips like some very fried potato that's very skinny fried potato into mm. ketchup and then takes it and she bites it and she looks it's a little bit small so i just had this i had this this idea of you like meaning to dip it into the ketchup but actually mm-hmm. dipping it into your water like <laughs> it's just, it's just noticing soggy. that it was wrong <laughs> she, just, she just and she eats it anyway and she goes is it just me or is love just everywhere in this place i was like did you just find did you just find an accent I was copying him accidentally. I'm sorry. It's the accent of love. I like that being canon. And Emily just like. And Emily starts speaking an elder drag- dragon with yeah. an accent. No, that's not yeah, what like, I'm trying to say. This so, half no. of her mouth starts talking in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> she needs to smile more. Like when, when you say that clover hops down like under the table off her chair under the table and sort of um walks over to sin's leg and just kind of like puts a paw gently on sin's leg like attention please kind of thing oh she glances <laughs> down and like kind of blushes a little bit and will pull you onto her lap and clear her throat because she's a little embarrassed uh but then she'll kind of like glance at the teacups I think I'm going to need you to hold on to those for a little bit longer. I don't want them to break, you know, on the road. Of course, I will keep them very safe for you. Okay. Yeah, he gets the I... green light. Anemone from, like, far away. Sin can hear it very, very <laughs> cool, clearly. Like, not even hiding it. He gets the green light. He's good. He's good. Uh, He's good people. Honest, as a side note the uh, non-detection scroll that he gave you will hide you for one hour from any deity. Gotcha. So it's like a, a, like if there's a moment, it's like a, okay, that's going to yeah. be interesting. If you, if it, maybe if Nixara becomes too much for you, you get at least an hour away from summer. So. Nice. Hey, she's been kind of quiet lately. I'm enjoying the respite, but I also know that I, should, I feel like in the past she has gone quiet and I've been like, oh, I'm in the clear. And then yeah. suddenly she's like, hello, my favorite little girl. <laughs> you were like, oh, uh, that's, that's so, <laughs> um, uh, I don't like that at all. Yeah, as, uh, you, you, let's Nixar not say that. Is nice. She's not. She's not nice. Yeah, but it does. It's a bad. It's a, it's a gross. She's As... she's she's trying to sucker you right now. She's, she's real nice up. to me though. Yeah, she's I know. Very... <laughs> I know she is. That's because she's trying to sucker you. Don't be I am not. I am no sucker. Okay. I. I and no nope. claim otherwise. Listen. Our <laughs> <laughs> can of banana. Our can of banana. <laughs> <laughs> I killed her. Oh, I killed her. <laughs> okay, it's fine. <laughs> um, just so you're all aware, um, as you guys had been served breakfast or dinner, uh, Zelfer notices that there is no cutlery around her. Um, and Roderick is, notices that she's in a she has lost jacket. that particular that's a privilege and she has lost that particular privilege mm-hmm. Roderick actually puts down a plate of finger foods and like says <laughs> chicken <her>. nuggets <laughs> like, and chicken nuggets and her. celery with like peanut butter in the crevice and yeah. like, like it's, baby it's carrots foods, like sandwiches that he's cut up and he's like if we can't use the proper table manners <laughs> we don't have the items 
that chokes on problems. you. Uh, fried mozzarella sticks are her favorite food. Obviously, yeah. she's like, "Well, that's fine. I don't. I'll just throw the food." And he's like, "I would advise against it." <laughs> um, is, is she Maisie? She doesn't. Here? You know, she doesn't need cutlery. Your mother and your brothers are not at dinner tonight. Sucks to suck. <laughs> um, it was an ugly sound I just made. I'm so sorry. I, okay. <laughs> hey, I've been making ugly sounds all night. Wow. Really? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I will remind you, um, because I think <laughs> that Juniper has forgotten, you wanted to talk to Morgana. Oh, yeah, I did. Um. God, that was a while ago. What did I want to talk to her about? <laughs> a ring. That's right. That's right. Um, but I had I wanted to, to I wanted to talk to her about the ring, but I had like an excuse to talk to her, and I'm just trying to remember what the excuse was. Oh yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll go up to Morgana at dinner if she's there. Mm -hmm. She's talking with Lord Bond and Lady Orion. I'll, what do I'll... you What do you do? Um, I'll sort of hop up onto like a chair near them or onto the table kind of near them and just wait patiently for like a an entry into the conversation. <laughs> you you hop up on the table, you're waiting, they're talking. Um, you get like a side glance from Morgana for a moment and then she kind of takes some chicken and and like pulls it apart and puts it on the table for you. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Um I will accept her chicken happily. Um, <laughs> and when when there's a little gap in conversation, I'll also kind of um, butt my head up against Lady Orion and just smile up at her and say, it's, it's so nice to see you happy. I'm so happy for you. Uh, she pats you. She, it's been a while. So thank you. I'll just give her some little kitty love. Um, um, what do you call it? I don't know what you call that. <laughs> Lord Bon is like, this is the cutest thing he's ever seen. Um, <sighs> trying really hard not to squee and is happy <laughs> that his his uh, betrothed is happy. So, uh -huh. yeah, he's loving every second of this. Um, that's That's adorable. <laughs> And, and Morgana looks at you and is just, I'm glad that you made it through. Thank you. We, uh, yeah, we got, we got through. And I, I guess we now have a bunch of other stuff to, to try and save the world, I guess. <laughs> um. I, I was hoping to ask you about, excuse you, I was hoping to ask you, <laughs> one sec, time to save the world. <laughs> that's what, um, that's I don't what have Clover any... is doing as she's talking. She's just stepping on everything. Yeah. Just like... <laughs> like tail in the face. Yeah. yeah. They're presenting my butt. They're, they're moving their food out of the way so they can t continue to eat. Lord Bon is secretly squeeing a little bit and trying yeah. not, not to. He's a cat guy. Clover is a little bit more polite than this dickhead. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to ask you um, about what happened in the Chamber of Eternity um, yesterday. That was yesterday, right? Um, I think so, yeah. Um, yeah. Because... Um, I mean, you, you you heard what happened, right? That that I spoke to Luna and Anemone also spoke to one of her. Does that happen? Like, do people talk to gods in the chamber? What what is that? Not often, mainly spirits, but gods have shown themselves from time to time. Yeah, that 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 happens. 
Okay. I, I just, I've never actually been face to face with Luna before. It was, it was, it was eye opening. I gotta say. Um, I've never seen a god myself, though I do hear that sometimes they answer people. Rare, I think, for them to come down themselves. I, I do have to wonder what's going on with our group then, because that's where it's awesome. taken an interest in us. <laughs> for the best. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit worried, to be honest. Um, like, because it sounds like we're going to get ourselves into probably plenty of fights, like what happened down in the catacombs. And sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that can keep them all alive, you know, with healing magic and stuff. And I don't know. She looks at I you worry. and she gives you a very knowing look as her eyes flick to Anemone, who already tried to get this ring. <laughs> and uh and she goes I'll lend it to you on the condition that you return it when this is all done it was my mother's of course of course and she takes it off her finger holds it for a minute like gives it a kiss and will Unbuckle your collar um, and slide it on there. Whatever you're doing is important. So I'll do what I can to help. Morgana, I give you my word that once we return from oh, doing what we have to do on this mammoth task, I will return your family heirloom to you safe and sound. Of course. And you know, thank that you means for your help. You'll have to stay alive to do so. And she gives you a little scratch. I, no pressure. If she lets me, I'll, I'll hop on her lap and just stay there for a bit. Um, you, just, you hop know. on her lap. She gives you scratches. And as she's eating, she takes pieces of chicken that she gives to you. And I'll just I'll I'll just stay there for a while, letting letting the rest of them continue with their conversations, just you know, enjoying the lap and the chicken. Um if there's any if there's not anything anyone else wants to do. Um I did wanna um ask the prince uh mm -hmm. a question. Um, excuse me, uh Prince Eldrion. Yes. Did Maisie and my brothers leave? No, but I do believe they are making plans to travel. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. I was just a little bit worried about them um, being diplomats and, and all of that. Uh, you know, I, we talked about this before, about, about it, it could be dangerous for them for Maisie to leave and perhaps share things that you wouldn't want to be shared. Do you want me to keep her here? No. Um, I guess... Because I can. But um, I have the feeling that her and your brothers will end up in a cell. That's fine. Sorry. You hear from across the room. <laughs> a, cell, a cell here or a cell there? Here. If I force them to stay. Right. I don't want you to do that. I, I guess I'll go. I like it. <laughs> Fuck your 
Rosslitz just in the middle <laughs> of the in the <laughs> most center place of the whole mm-hmm. table and got ears in every conversation and it's just <laughs> like just like wing like yeah that's for, she deserved that's because we're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> this is a hundred percent happening back and forth. <laughs> and and he's just, just deserved kind of, it. And, and he's just gonna lightly <laughs> nudge Rose. <laughs> Cappy's family. Let let Cappy do it. But it's okay. my boyfriend. I'm just saying. It's her family and yes, I know. he has power. But I didn't tell him he power. should. I didn't tell him he mm-hmm. should lock him up. I'm just Cappy, saying. Let let Cappy finish her conversation Fine. with him as he's dropping. Uh, okay. <laughs> Eat your food. Here, have more AL. No, not AL. You're not AL. <laughs> not a, that is not a good idea. <laughs> the, the more alcohol, alcohol, the louder she's gonna get. <laughs> um Jess, can you remind me, were my brothers staying in the same, like, rooms with my mother, or are they separate? They're separate rooms. They're at the the same end as her, though. Okay. I want to talk to my brothers then, but not her. Okay. Um, so, dinner ends. You guys uh, begin to make your way to the third floor where the guest quarters are. Um as you return to your rooms, uh, you stumble upon Diana being pulled into a room by Lady Marigold, lips locked. Um, <laughs> you guys are like, you haven't. Um, I'm looking, looking very pointedly at Anemone, like watching and emily is actually not going to where the guest rooms are she'll say i'll see you guys later she's actually gonna go where baldrick is okay so um i'm gonna say we'll do cappy you go and see your brothers and then we'll do baldrick and you guys will rest for the night unless there's anything else anyone wants to do well let's do one by one by one uh cappy you go to see your brothers yeah knock knock um uh, there's a pause, and then you hear um, some he- heavy things being moved around, most likely equipment, um, and Torna answers the door. Torna, uh, I... Huh. Can I talk to you? Yeah, Gabby. And he opens the door. So, I heard you're leaving? We were planning to. Yep. Were you going to say anything? I mean, before we left. When are you leaving? A day or two. We'll be gone tomorrow morning. Where are you going? We're going to Mossy Bark. I don't, we have to oh. find... We have to find stones to stop whatever is supposed to be happening at the convergence. And I think I just, um, well, I was, A, I was, um, I was just worried that maybe I I wasn't clear in, in our conversation earlier with Maisie, but also B, I'm about to go out and try to be a hero. And I think I kind of wanted to talk to my brothers about that. He takes off his shoe and just throws it across the the hallway and it hits another door and Norna's Mm. head pops out. What? (laughs) And he sees you. (sighs) They, he picks up the shoe and walks over. Yeah. So... I I don't know if you think that you and Maisie are a package deal that if I don't want to spend time with her or see her that that means I don't want to spend time with you because that's not the case I still want I still think of you as family I still want my brothers but I I don't want to see Maisie and it, it seems like I don't know so- who Maisie is you mean mom? Mom? Yeah. Yeah. Our mom? No. 
Norna is salty. Norna is very salty. Norna? Torna? You are my parents. That's you raised me. Weird. Because you're my well, sister. You did the work. Being a parent isn't about biology. Yeah, I know, Cap. What do you think I should do? How how am I supposed to to let to let her try and be a mother to me after all these years? You know. You know what it was like. How could you expect me to to let her in? I can't. I can't. That's Norna. Torna. You see him kind of shake his head. We're elves, Cavi. We live a long time. What she did sucks, but people change. Do you think she Maybe. has? I... I don't know. Yes and no. I think she's still searching for something. Searching for no. a way to kill Fleety? Nor uh, Torna's like, yeah. Norna's like, um, I suppose. I guess I just he looks at Torna you know something that I don't and I don't like it and Torna's like I have no idea what you're talking about because I know nothing ever <laughs> one too many hits to the head I, that's I have true. a very short term memory Torna don't lie I am not lying. I have a very short term memory because I have taken multiple hits to the head. I can tell when you're keeping something from me. Norna can tell. Norna should be able to tell. We're twins. So? What are you keeping from us? Norna looks at him and goes, You just admitted that you were lying. <laughs> I don't like these questions, <laughs> and I think that you should all leave my room. And no one is leaving my room. Um, <laughs> I just know he's eyeing Tor uh, Norna. I know that mom has a patron of sorts that she's been working for S since, I mean, most of your life, Cappy. A warlock patron? I don't know. I don't know. She. Where do you think that she disappeared to for, like, she leaves fairly regularly. She was working. Right. I always thought her job was was saving the world or whatever. Doing, killing monsters. Not. And yeah, it is on the way to whatever she's doing. I don't know what she's doing, but she was working for someone to get something to kill someone. And now that makes sense that it's fleeting. Because I didn't know that you were sold but that makes sense to me now I hate this conversation do you know anything else about this patron 
they were given that she's I mean, she never had magic before this. I thought so. that Fleety gave her the magic in exchange for the for me. She never had magic. And that showed up I don't know, maybe five years after you were born. Uh, where did she, do you know where she went? Like, even what direction? It might help figure this out. Um, no. He is, be I'm not going to make you roll for anything. He's just like, no, I have no clue. I don't ask questions. Okay. Um... I don't, I, I just, I don't know how to, I don't know how to talk to either of you anymore. It feels like I always say the wrong thing and I love both of you so much and I don't want to, to not have my brothers around again, but. Norna looks offended. <laughs> I mean, how would you know that? Wait, wait, I don't know how to talk. What? You don't even call. You don't call. You don't write. You don't call. You don't write. So, I mean, I don't know what bullshit you're talking about is I don't know how to talk <laughs> to you. You just left. I know why I left. Yeah. And then I know you just called me your daddy and now you and then you abandoned me. <laughs> I I don't have the same memory as you. I was a child for most of that. I didn't see it really until I saw it through your eyes, Norna. Okay. I'm allowed to be bitter. Let me be bitter. Okay. Are you... Bitter to the point that you never want to talk to me again, or are you just no? Okay, I'm just pissy. There's a difference. <laughs> okay, I'm allowed to be. This is this sucks, and I don't like that you're dealing with some sort of archfey, and you won't fucking come home. I just want my family. I don't know what to do about. Lady, I, we have, uh, so part of this quest, we are given a poem and the first part, it, we're supposed to find these stones and please, I beg you, don't tell mother any of this. Karna immediately goes, you should definitely not tell us any of this. Why? Because we will tell her everything. Why? Because she's scary. Okay? <laughs> Norna's like, yeah, we will tell her everything. I could be scary too. <laughs> They're both laughing your nose your nose goes <laughs> look at the little like the little whiskers and they're like they've started manhandling you <laughs> with the little floppy ears <laughs> oh the <laughs> condescension <laughs> yeah you're terrifying i can be <laughs> there's a little nose and a little look at a wiggle immediately they're just they're they're your older brothers. You will never be scary to them. I Especially know. as a bunny. Yeah. Yeah. Poor baby. Fine. You don't want me to talk to you about what's going on in my life? I won't. Okay, you're being a little no, we're just, just... Okay, fine. Tell us. Yeah, we'll definitely try and keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. We will. Never mind. I want to know. That's Norna. I want to know. But if she pulls my ear, I will cave. 
<laughs> well, then maybe the both of you need to grow some fucking balls. Okay. If we're going to come in here and be like, I want us to be a family, don't be a bitch. You're the one who said that you won't keep my secrets and you're going to tell mother everything and that you would rather not hear about my life because you're scared of mommy. Whoa now. Tor Tornas. You know, we're starting to hit below the belt. Just because I have a healthy respect and fear of my mother. Is it healthy to mean... fear your mother? Yes, it is. I don't think so. I think that you're being mean right now. I think you're being mean. I think that you love mother more than you love me, and you are scared of her, and you won't stand up to her, and I wish you would just once. Norna walks away. I storm out of the room. Yeah, Tor Torna is like coming out into the hallway after both of you and just, just wait. Okay. One goes that way. One goes that way. You both fucking suck. <laughs> and then the door slams. Um, <laughs> We're going to go to Anemone. Less, 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 this is this is the theme music that anemone is using to walk <laughs> up to see baldrick and that is what what baldrick hears the moment she steps into the room she goes i did not is that like a new ringtone or new bell new bell oh my god anemone no. is just crunk uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're just crunk <laughs> So you are walking in. He is working on um, the items that you have asked him to make for you. Um, and he looks up. <clears throat> hey, Baldrick. Uh, he puts the stuff, the uh, items down. He goes, uh, "How do you?" Oh, just uh, I was just checking in on the progress of the stuff. Um, for me and uh, Duffra for the glitter bombs, but I don't. So your friend here, so I guess it's it's going well. I uh, I have heard many explosions. Um, that as you for have. the items that you just commissioned yesterday, uh, hmm. it's uh, it's going to take me a while. Of course, yeah, no. Um, I just came back to let you know that I was heading out Did he have for. That yeah yes, yeah he had he had his he had the scottish he was cute he, he was blonde he was cute and she liked him <laughs> yeah um she's she's not being suave about this she's she's just gonna tell him um so me and the girls we're gonna be going on an adventure and it's gonna take us a while and back um when i come back do you want anything along the way for materials and stuff because i'm looking at your shop here i guess you don't get too much stuff to work with I you see him kind of look shocked and then a little excited and then a little touched and he's like I mean, if you manage to find any cool metals, metals? you could okay. always bring them back like any metal or just like cool like cool to the touch uh, at no, uh, just anything interesting would be good. Okay, like interesting. Okay, okay. So if I find something like I don't know, mithril leaves. I was just thinking about that. Yes, immediately bring that back. That sounds sure. awesome. Sure. Cool. 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 How about like, do you work with? I don't know. I'm just dreaming. I I've been told that I overthink about things when I go out on adventures and I try to think about all the possible creatures and monsters we might come against. And sometimes those monsters and creatures can make good leather. So I'm thinking, you know, like if we come across an owl bear, but maybe not an owl bear, that's a bad reference. I don't know, like a big ugly no, monster. No skinny with... owl bears. You know how to skin owl bears. We have too many if, owl bear uh... friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you 
find anything interesting, I, I'd love to have it. Okay, well, cool. Leathers, Um, all of that I can work with. okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's all I came by to, to, to ask before I left and also to make sure that Delphra, you know, isn't blowing up your stuff with her new friend. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Not all I yet. really came. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, I'm gonna leave you to your work because it looks like you're busy and, uh, it, You look really good today. Um, working. Did, did you want to stay for a bit? Do you need help with like holding heavy things? Because I can hold heavy things. You know, you're you're welcome to be around here without having to work. Well, I feel like that that doesn't work well for me. I feel like in order. The, 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 to spend time with someone, I should help them with whatever it is that they're doing, not just, you know, How sit about still. instead of working, we um we play some cards. I suck at cards, but okay, let's do this. I'll I'll teach you a game. Oh, There okay. you go. What game? What game? What game? Uh, it's called Strip. Um, no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> It's a variant of poker. You know. Rose, Uh... why, why do I keep hearing your voice <laughs> everywhere? There you are. I'm in your head. I am always there in the back of your mind. <laughs> Can I make a quick perception check to make sure Roz is nowhere near me? <laughs> I'm not. I rolled Um, a 15 plus stuff anyway. Roz is actually hiding under some some sheets. Uh, like Oh, I she just absolutely need to get is. um. A few floors up, though. Maybe. So, uh, you guys are going to spend some time bonding and playing cards together. Um, he gets Um. you some ale. And you have a good time? Oh yeah, most definitely. She does not play games. This this chick really sucks at games. This is the one thing Anemone is good at some things. Figuring out games like cards, not so great. Pull After out the dragon it's like chess. it's like after a couple rounds, he just gives up and gets out checkers. Um <laughs> Surprisingly, she's really good at that. Yeah, I, I could see her being good at, at checkers and even chess. So you guys, like, you do have fun. Um, it's, it's a cute moment. I always play cards against humanity. There's, you know, no winners or losers. <laughs> Just terrible people. <laughs> um, is there anything else anyone wants to do for the night before you settle down? I'll work on, I'm going to study that book that Galen gave me. Perfect. Anything I think else? Roz would like go upstairs and like knock quietly on the door just to see. A couple minutes go by um, and he opens the door and then just steps back and opens the door. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> She just walks in. <laughs> yeah. Blam. Are you spending his Bates Yeah, of Black yeah, spending that's the night? absolutely. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um <laughs> I he can okay, the words that just came to mind aren't this yeah, we're we're at, it, it's like post fight, like our first fight kind of thing. Kind of makeup sex, is that what you're trying Yeah, to say? a hundred percent, but words were a little different in my brain. <laughs> Uh it's very angry and rough. I was going to say that, I mean, I've said many of this, I've said both words out of context. So hate fucking is what I came to my brain just now. Um, no, I don't think it's hate fucking. He's not even that angry with you. <laughs> It's not like he was He, more embarrassed. it is just hurt. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's entirely fair. I'll make it up to him. That's exactly what you do. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Yeah, I will. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> for all night. as you guys, I'm an elf. uh, <laughs> rest for the night, um, some dreams are going to happen. Um, and we will start with Anemone. As you are sleeping, um, in the enveloping darkness of your dream, an abrupt blaze of light momentarily blinds you, a radiant intensity that feels as if 
It's tearing apart the very fabric of the night. Um, as your vision clears, the light transforms into a pair of golden eyes. Their brilliance reminiscent of the most precious metal, gleaming with a power that feels both ancient, ancient and awe-inspiring. These are not human eyes, but those of a dragon. Then, almost as if blending from one reality to another, the golden iridescence softens into a warm amber gaze of eyes you could recognize anywhere. You've spent enough time gazing into them in your youth and much more time recalling them on your own. Eli's masculine gaze regards mm. you. The juxtaposition of dragons imposing gold and Eli's comforting amber eyes leaves very complex emotions throughout your mind and body. And that is your dream. Potatoes. <laughs> Potatoes! 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 Um, wow. <laughs> uh, Cappy, as you sleep in your dream you are ensnared in a tumultuous world of fey deals and relentless blizzards uh, where the cold seeps into your very bones amidst the chaos you witness a figure your mother her essence draining into shadows black energy leeching her soul from her a stark absence of love in her eyes directed at you uh, you look, a look you know I mean, all too well. You are swept into a maelstrom of powerlessness, your voice silenced, your choices stripped away, leaving you adrift in a life not your own. Just as that despair threatens to consume you, the moon emerges, a beacon of serene light in the tempest. Uh, it bathes you in a luminous embrace, casting away the shadows and the cold, soothing your spirit. Under its gentle glow, the turmoils fade, the nightmares dissolve, and a profound calm envelops you. Cradled by this celestial light, you find peace and slip into a tranquil sleep within the dream, safe and cherished under the moon's watchful eye. Clover. In a silvery tapestry of dream, you chase a ball of yarn joyfully throughout the night. The moon in the sky above begins to pulse with an otherworldly light, transforming into the luminous visage of Luna. Her eyes, pools of starlight gazing into your own, she speaks in a melody only the night can understand, her voice echoing through the vast, serene darkness that envelops you. What has transpired? She inquires from you. What do you do? What do you mean? Nixaria rages. I don't know why. You have no knowledge for me. Perhaps you should ask her why she rages. There's a beat where she just stares at you. Yes. I may be your agent in some ways, but I am not your messenger between gods. I ask you once more, how have I hurt you?
I, I can try to explain, although I can't promise that you will understand. She nods. I know. I know that you and Nixaria and all of the gods, really, you have much larger concerns than what happens down on Astelia. Especially, you have much larger concerns than individual people. But I think that's what hurts, is us individual people, we try our best. We, we do our best to serve you. And yet, we are still insignificant. Just Until... I'll oh, go ahead. We, we remain insignificant until it becomes in your interest or any of the gods' interest to, to dabble with our lives, especially when it comes to using us as pawns against each other. And I think that's what hurts. She considers you. And then you begin to hear prayers and people calling out for Luna. And then so many voices that you can't even, it doesn't even, it's overwhelming. You can't even make sense. It's just noise. And she goes, would you pick your, would you pick a single voice out of all of that? I hear that all the time. And then everything fades. But, Clover, when you awake, you are curled around a silvery bar ball of yarn that smells like silver vine and is just the, has just the right amount of give when you dig your claws into it. Now, let's see here. Rosalind. As the yes. veil of sleep morphs into a dream for you, you find yourself mm -hmm. standing in a realm of breathtaking beauty, a place that seems both grand and immeasurably comfortable. You stand now in the celestial court of Nixaria, in her sanctuary among the stars. The twilight here is perpetual and soft, otherworldly glow that illuminates everything with the gentlest of lights, making the stars above twinkle in an intricate dance of silver and shadow. The ground beneath your feet is polished obsidian, reflecting the heavens in its surface surrounding uh, surrounded by towering pillars of gleaming silver that stretch upwards. Its luminesc luminescence is soothing and inviting. Here in this place that defies the very concept of time and space, you feel an overwhelming sense of peace, as if Nixaria herself has woven it into the essence of the night, into the sanctuary, not just for her, but for any of those for anyone who finds themselves here in her domain. Yet, amidst this tranquil beauty, you sense her presence, and it is much less friendly than it was last time. Melting out of the shadows, Nixaria stands before you. I thought we were going to be friends, little moonling. I never said we weren't going to be friends, but it hasn't been very long since the last time I saw you and you mm. said you were going to give me time to think. So mm. what makes you think that we're not friends? I haven't done anything to that I know of, at least, to make then, you think otherwise. Why did you tell your sisters about our meeting? 
if you were asked not to. I asked only one thing of you. In return, I would give you the one thing you wanted most in this life. A child brought back from the beyond, given a second chance at life. So, if you know that, then you know that apparently Val has been with me this entire time. Or not entire time, but at least for the last couple weeks. Why didn't you tell me that was her? It's only partly her. Still. Do you think that's information that I would have... Is she not? I mean, only because she's with... I don't know. I, I feel like I would keep her... Well. Val actually ends up floating into view. Mm-hmm. I have struggled to trust anyone but my sisters for a very long time. And that includes Luna. I know. But you know the one thing that I don't understand, Moonling? How one such as yourself has a crisis of faith when the gods show themselves to you. So, it's hard sometimes to know whether or not it was just a dream, because I didn't have any, when I, like, when I woke up, I didn't have any guarantee that that was true, and it's not that I don't believe that you exist, I just, it's hard, you know, we've been told for our entire life, and I've been along, I've been alive for a while, um, our entire lives to trust Luna, which never felt completely right to me, but to distrust you. So it's hard to not, it's hard to go against that on one conversation. You speak of trust, and yet I think the only thing that is proven here is that we cannot trust a moonling. Mm, that's not necessarily true, but I'm having a hard time. The people that I have known, the people that I have trusted over the course of my time, people I'm supposed to trust. So for instance, my dad have never really panned out. So I'm Trust just saying, I, faith. ah, see, I'm not good at that. Really, really not good at that. Um, and I just, it's, I'm sorry. I have been str- I, really struggling with this. Because I don't even know if Val wants to come back. I don't know that I can, I can't make that decision for her. Yeah. Tell me. You know? With your soul split in different places, do you think that she can rest? So even if she did not come back, making her whole again would give her peace. But don't make that decision for her. No, that's why I don't. That's that's a big thing. I don't want to make the decision for her. Is there any way to do that? Is there any way to talk to her? beyond just talking to this little portion of her? You will have to figure that out on your own. Because trust is a two-way street, and you broke mine. Earn it back, and maybe we'll talk. How might I do that if I choose to do so? You have that thought in darkness. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Sin. Yes. <laughs> As you trance, you are suddenly under a sky painted with the ink of the night. The full moon beckons you, its light casting 
a solitary spotlight on your now sleeping consciousness, it's peaceful. And then you hear, how could you abandon me so easily? <laughs> Whose voice is it? You hear a voice that you have never heard before. A blend of sorrow and disbelief weaving through each syllable. I will give you a... Give me an inside check. Let's see if you can put it together. I mean, I guess it would be intelligence. We'll do both. Why not? <laughs> I'll do an insight. Roll. I got an 11. An 11 is enough. I mean, you've never heard this voice before. But, I mean, you spent many years being her priestess. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think she's going to kind of hang her head. You're late. Suddenly, the air thickens with a palpable darkness and a dream and the dream all but shatters around you. Nixaria emerges from the shadows, her presence a chilling tempest that extinguishes Luna's luminescence with a power that brooks no defiance. And she shouts, she is mine and you are not welcome here, sister. She turns towards you, her hair and her garments swirling in a tempest that rages around her, a storm that you observe but do not feel. Almost like you're standing in an unseen hurricane. And she looks at you. She walks close to you, right up to your face. She goes, Cease your pining for a deity that never desired you in the first place. Her voice is booming with anger and in insistence that cuts through the silence, commanding all your attention. You try my patience, Aurora. What do you do? What do you want? Whatever quest you have decided to send yourself on, return home. You know I can't do that. Whatever for. If you go through with your intentions, everybody dies. Everything will be fine. Everything will work out as it for you. should. For you, it'll be fine for you. It won't be fine for me, for my sisters, for my family, for the world, for Salandry, for anywhere but you. It will be fine. It has been taken care of. What's that mean? It means it has been taken care of. And you will return home. Well, until I have new information, that's not going to happen. Return home, little sinner. Her words are sharp. They're like thorns. Yeah, that was well, a You mean may thing to just say. lose my favor. And I assure you that is not something you wish to experience. If and I lose your favor, will Luna actually be able to speak to me? If you think that she would want to without me meddling in your life, you're deluded. It's not and that is like a minute ago. She doesn't say that, but she's thinking that. You've also spent how however many hundreds of years being a priestess of Luna and have never spoken to her. I don't think I expected her to to have conversations with me. This is kind of a new thing. I think that just the word, like just witnessing Luna's presence for a second, being banished and Nixaria very jealously saying, fuck off, she's mine. Now Sin is like, is 
Nick's the reason? Is she intentionally blocking communication? Which it's upsetting. I mean, she might be now. She wasn't always in your life. Yeah, that's true. But that's where the conversation ends. Okay. And in the morning, you all awake, safe and sound in your beds. But we will continue that next week. GG. Oh, GG. GG. Very good game. Thank wow. you, DM. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. That was a lot. <laughs> okay. that Sorry. Was a lot. <laughs> it was good. Was it was a session. It was a mm. good a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. There's there some real intense at the end there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. It's no, good. Don't yeah, it's, it's a good the thing. <laughs> no, Nixaria, Nixaria is now like went from. Nixaria has always been there for her in our the back of the minds yeah which makes me wonder as a player if nixaria can't Was. make the moonstone work like, oh, that's why yeah that's why make, she can't make the moonstone work she needs someone to make the moonstone work for her i have a, that that's Luna. my theory that is my player theory yeah yeah <laughs> she needs she needs something to make it work make it work to do what though you're really good at this jess yeah. Yeah, very good. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're seriously. real good at this. You really what did I do? <laughs> no, this whole DMing <laughs> yeah. thing. This like, whole, you're yeah. fucking good at it. This yeah. shit is... This shit is ah. Oof, it's meaty. It's really meaty. It's a yeah. lot. <laughs> In a good we, way. We, we got a I lot of you. a little bit of everything. I don't know which of the freaking moon sisters I even... Like, I don't like either of them at this point. Yeah, well, yeah no, I don't, I don't like any of them. At the moment. I hate right. them yeah. so much. Yeah. It's almost like they, I, it's almost like they're starting a war for no reason other than literally none, better. just out of fucking mm-hmm. spite and yep. to show who's <laughs> best. Why don't we just well, like turn this campaign into a God Slayer campaign? Yes, <laughs> the gods, kill the gods, just kill see them. what happens. But I like yeah. some of the gods. <laughs> Just these well, two. Well, we're trying to figure out which gods we ne- like and which ones we want to kill. <laughs> All <laughs> gods are douches. They just haven't proven it to you yet. Half we, of we us take start, one, half of us together and put them against each other. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, we're going to go to Mossy Brick. We're headed to Mossy Brick, wherever that is. Yep. Mossy Brick it mm-hmm. is. Yep. Mossy Brick. Okay. Uh, I'm Ice New Stars and I have been your shenanigan sovereign. Woo-hoo! Um, Woo-hoo! <laughs> Uh, Juniper. <laughs> Me. Uh, I'm Juniper, Linden and Spice, and I have been Clover tonight um, out to Baxter Cleric. If you want to come see me on Sundays, uh, alternate Sundays, I play Alien and Naturally Shattered over on Shattered Tabletop, Shattered Tabletop Games. Oh, my God. Um, Katie. Hi. Katie. Me. That's me. Um, Dungeon Mrs. Katie and all the things. And, uh, yeah, if you want to see me elsewhere, I'm I'm on Shadows and Ox on Sundays and Wednesdays, every other Wednesdays, and I'm here on Tuesdays, and I'm doing the things. So, uh, Scarlet, go. Hi, I'm Scarlet, and I was your sinner today. <laughs> um, you can catch me tomorrow on my channel. I'll be DMing out of the abyss. Hey. Um, uh, GM of Revan. Hello, my name is GM of Revan. You can call me in. I got to hang out with these gorgeous, amazing, brilliant, powerful women today with a really amazing and incredible DM, which I think you need to follow them on their next adventure, which is on Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Mondays. Mondays. You should follow them on Mondays. Follow the sub channel. That said, I'm going to say, take it away, Kepi. Um, oh, and I played the, the character Anemone. Yeah, I played yeah, that part too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Star. I've been Cappy tonight. Uh, your hair and gone wild magic sorcerer. And I go by Star Mama C on TikTok. I go everywhere else, which is almost nearly everywhere else uh, as characters without stories, which is the name of my podcast where I interview people about characters they haven't had a chance to play yet. And you should listen because we did an episode together as well. Go back and listen to that one. Yeah. Um, Thank you for for having me, Jess, in this game. It's beautiful and wonderful, and I love so it. Much fun. I am so glad <laughs> that you guys are having fun. Uh, okay. 
Bye, everyone. We'll see you Bye. later. Bye. 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 Bye.